Hey everybody. Today we're applying the central limit theorem, building confidence intervals for the population mean. Our formula for the confidence interval for the population mean, mu, has a pretty large assumption built in. Namely, that the population that you're sampling from has an exactly normal distribution, say with mean mu and variance sigma squared. Often, however, that's not a reasonable assumption. For instance, suppose we want to know the average length of calls from a phone bank. The distribution of calls from a phone bank is almost certainly not going to be normal. You're going to have many calls that are going to be short, a few that are very long, and certainly no calls that have negative durations. It's a lot more likely that the histogram of calls from this call bank, um, from this phone bank, it's going to look more like this than like a bell curve. However, we're still able to construct a confidence interval for the population mean mu, the average length of all calls from that call center, using the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem says, roughly, that as long as n is somewhat large, generally n greater than or equal to 30 is enough, then the sampling distribution of the sample mean is always going to be approximately normally distributed, even if the, sam even if the population that you're sampling from is not. So you should be imagining going out and getting samples of size n repeatedly. Get one sample, compute um, an x bar, a sample mean. Do it again, get another x bar. Do it again, get another x bar. Once you've got a whole lot of x bars, make a histogram out of those values. The central limit theorem is saying that that histogram is going to have approximately a bell shape, and that its center is going to be the same as the population mean while its spread is going to be the population, um, while, it, while its spread as measured by variance is going to be the same as the population variance divided by the sample size. Um, roughly speaking, the sampling distribution of x bar is going to be approximately normal with the same mean as the population but less spread. One additional thing to bear in mind is that this approximation will get better and better as n increases. Let's work through a couple of examples. Suppose calls to that phone bank have standard deviation sigma equals one minute, and that we're going out and getting samples of size 81. So get a sample of size 81, compute a sample mean x bar, do it again, 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 again. That distribution of sample means of the x bars is gonna be approximately normal. Its mean is gonna be the same as the population mean for individual calls and its standard deviation is going to be sigma divided by the square root of n, 1 divided by the square root of 81, about 0.11 in this case. Now we can compute confidence intervals just like we did when the population distribution was known to be normal. We just have to recognize that now our confidence intervals are only approximate. So suppose we go out and get a sample of size 81, finding a sample mean of 1.1 minutes. That was the sample mean in that um, histogram I showed a few slides ago, by the way. And let's construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean using this information. So here's the formula for the population mean um, confidence interval. In this case, again, it's only going to be approximate. Mu is about equal to x bar plus or minus z star sigma over the square root of n. Here, z star is the critical z value corresponding to the level of confidence, 95%. Now we just plug in values. x bar is 1.1, sigma is 1.0, and n is 81. The um, z star corresponding to a level 95% confidence is 1.960, a value you can get using a table or using technology. Simplifying this down a little bit, we get that the population mean mu is going to be about 1.1 plus or minus 0.22 minutes with 90, 95% confidence. One more example. A large corporation employs thousands of clerks at retail stores nationwide. In a sample of size 35, the mean number of hours worked per week was 23. Construct a level 90% confidence interval for the mean number of hours worked by all clerks per week um, all clerks employed by this corporation. Assume sigma equals 5, the standard deviation for the number of hours worked per week by clerks at this corporation. We're going to use the same formula for the confidence interval, 
mu is approximately equal to x bar plus or minus z star sigma over the square root of n. This is going to be approximate because we're not told anything about the shape of the distribution of the hours worked per week by employees. Could be symmetric in bell shape, or it could be highly asymmetric. Now we plug in numbers. x bar is 23, sigma is 5, and n is 35. The z star corresponding to a 90% confidence level is 1.645. When I do out this arithmetic, I get that mu is about equal to 23 plus or minus 1.4 hours with 90% confidence.